Although I am not ever going to try and claim that I am even close to one of the best graffiti artists, I have been able to be involved with graffiti and the graffiti scene now for over a decade. So I've gotten to meet quite a few different types of graffiti writers, and I'd like to organize those graffiti writers into different types that most graffiti writers fit into. And before I say anything else, I'm going to emphasize right off the bat that this is entirely just an opinion piece of mine, and it's more just how in my brain I organize different types of graffiti writers. And artists. I'd like to describe to you guys five different types of graffiti artists and what each of those types brings to the table for graffiti culture and their shortfalls. Not to fit anyone in a particular graffiti group, but to help sort of start a conversation about what actually is important in graffiti. In fact, as a graffiti artist, you will probably find that you don't fit in just one of these categories, but it's more of a blend, some of which you'll find you're highly correlated with and others you'll find you're fairly distant with. After all, everyone is unique. And let me emphasize quickly but prominently that I will sound quite negative throughout a lot of this video, but I promise you, you will be able to see what I'm saying in a positive light if you actually watch the video the whole way through rather than just catching some of the segments where I sound a little bit pessimistic. So please do that. So the first type of graffiti artist is what I like to sort of refer to as the moral alternates, or I like to ironically sort of call them the bad boys of graffiti to sort of emphasize how childish this group can be in some situations and how sort of gangster they think they are. I think of this group as graffiti artists who believe that graffiti encompasses more than just writing on other people's property. In some cases, these graffiti artists will be more prone to racking paint and could be characterized as being a little bit quicker to be violent with other graffiti artists or even police in some cases. I think for a lot of people in this particular type of graffiti artist, gravitate towards this type of graffiti because of the environments that they have grown up in. Your environment, of course, plays a huge role in what kind of person in general you turn out to be and what values you carry throughout life. This type of graffiti artist could also be characterized as being far more willing to go over others' tags, throws, and graffiti pieces, often citing the reason for them doing so as that the other artist was too toy or didn't deserve the respect or something like that and they'll often go over pieces of other artists who aren't in the graffiti genre as well. Although I'm not describing this group in a very happy-go-lucky sort of light, there is some good that comes from this group and most of the other groups which I will get to later in the video. But the second and third groups share a lot of the same characteristics but I've still broken them up. They are what I refer to as the the know-it-alls and the controllers. Firstly, the know-it-alls. Again, I'm gonna start off with a lot of their negative sort of characteristics. So this know-it-all group has been almost entirely enabled by the growth of graffiti hubs on the internet. This group often claims to be old school graffiti writers and is in a lot of cases more than willing to give out their valuable advice about what other graffiti artists need to work on in their opinion or what they think of other graffiti writers in particular. It's funny because you see a lot of this personality type in comment sections of videos of very basic graffiti topics such as like how to tag graffiti, how to make a graffiti piece, things like that. Which is funny because why would any old school writer who actually knows their stuff have any reason to be searching those graffiti topics, let alone clicking on them and watching the videos of those basic topics? It doesn't really make sense. So that being the case, that tells me two things. They're either not as experienced as they say they are, or they could just be watching those videos solely to criticize other artists. And who really finds these people credible if they're so experienced, yet they still have time in a day in their illustrious career to watch beginner tutorials and comment their unsolicited advice on these videos. Come on, nobody wants that. And almost all the time, this group in particular turns to online forums to spread their advice simply because the wild claims that they are making in most cases about their credibility would be clearly untrue if it were to be a conversation face to face in real life. And also in most circumstances, they turn to online because 
because usually these people wouldn't have the courage to say a lot of the things they're saying face to face again in a real life environment. And it is unfortunate that this group seems to be so prominent sometimes in the online graffiti forums and culture because they usually end up spreading falsehoods or exaggerating the importance of their advice to people by hiding behind their inflated, falsely proclaimed achievements and careers. And without mentioning any names in particular, I will say that there are some very large graffiti channels run by people in this category on YouTube who have very inflated egos and shouldn't be convincing anyone really that their advice is particularly professional or valuable. And I think in a lot of ways it's really a great shame that they have as much influence as they do because it just further inflates their egos when they get attention and more importantly also dirties the information available on the internet about what graffiti really is and it damages the culture. And you'll find some of those characteristics in the next group which I already mentioned, the controllers as well. There's a bit of overlap between these two groups. Controllers are those graffiti artists who believe that graffiti should be one thing only or a small handful of things. They generally have very narrow views about what graffiti is, how the graffiti culture should be, how you should obtain your graffiti supplies, and much much more of course. Usually you hear people in this group citing that they are experienced and knowledgeable to back their claims just like the know-it-alls. And although both groups, I'd like to emphasize, may be knowledgeable in some circumstances, that doesn't mean that their opinions all of a sudden become correct as they are still opinions. Often you'll hear people in both of these groups talk about how things have been in the past or cite some knowledge about particular aspects of graffiti history, trying to use that as reasoning to say their way is the correct way. And although graffiti history and the roots of graffiti will forever have an impact on the evolution and values and workings of graffiti culture, it doesn't mean that graffiti will not continue to evolve and change. After all, graffiti is a very young art form compared to other art forms, and growth and change is always going to be happening. The next group is what I like to call the techies. This group for me is characterized by their love for artistic elements within graffiti and their fixation on a lot of time improvement. This is not necessarily good or bad, but it most definitely is entirely different than some of the other types of graffiti artists. About the only thing that the techies have in common with, say, the moral alternate group is that they both claim to do graffiti, but what they actually do on a day-to-day -day basis is entirely different from one another. For me, this breed of graffiti artists could be known for spending an agonizing amount of time on little details that most other graffiti artists would just find to be a waste of time. And although this mentality can be responsible for producing some of the best, most high quality work, it often also at times lacks an important regard for elements of traditional graffiti and graffiti history. And another group that I just wanted to mention quickly is the fifth group that I call the aspiring graffiti writers or casuals. To me, these are young or new graffiti writers who are discovering the great things about graffiti that we all love. And I want to give those people their own sort of category, even though they can be entirely different from one another within that category because growth experiences and your environment changes your opinions and a lot of times when you're discovering graffiti as an art form you have a lot of experience to gain which will change your perspective about certain things. I would say that most graffiti artists don't fall just within one of these categories of types of graffiti artists, but these types of graffiti artists are more like meters. For example, I would say that in general I'm highly correlated with the group that I'm calling the techies because I am a very technical writer and I am always striving for improvement, but I may also fall a bit within the category of the historians slash controllers because I do believe that graffiti history is very important to know and understand and be aware of, and in some particular cases make sure you're carrying on. Furthermore, my love for the proliferation of my graffiti would suggest a bit of the moral alternate in me, and I do like to think that everybody is young enough to still fit within the aspiring graffiti writer category. After all, it's never too late to learn new things, go through new experiences, and change your opinions on things. This is the best reasoning I can give for my advice that everyone should always listen and learn, while at the same time being wary of people's credibilities. And I know I 
have really gone in depth and created a lot of information on each type of graffiti artist. So what I'd like to do is organize these five types of graffiti artists onto some helpful scales to show you what each type is usually best at, which also might help you figure out which types of graffiti artists you are most correlated with specifically. These scales may not be true for every individual who is highly correlated with a specific type of graffiti artist, but this is what I have observed statistically over my time interacting within graffiti communities. I'm gonna look over to my computer over here because I created some nice graphics to hopefully show you guys as well. So the scale of most prolific, usually the more alternates and the controllers or historians seem to be best at this type of graffiti. I think this often goes along with how principled they are in terms of why they believe graffiti should be a certain way. Somewhere in the middle is usually the know-it-alls and the aspiring groups. Those are sort of toss-ups. Techies are usually falling a little bit behind on this scale in terms of proliferation, but the determination that a techie uses to improve and pay attention to detail can be the same thing that drives them to proliferate in some cases. The most technical, of course, the techies, you all saw that coming. The historians, the know-it-alls, and the aspiring graffiti writers are all sort of toss-ups, whereas in a lot of cases, the moral alternates usually can't spend too much time on this. On the scale of quality, you will find that the techies are unrivaled here. The rest are all sort of toss-ups. There's nothing saying that quality can't be associated with the other types of graffiti artists, but it's most prominent within the techie segment, and the types of graffiti artists that have the most longevity and the longest careers. Now this is gonna seem a little weird because of how opposite these two groups are, but I would suggest that the moral alternates and the techies both in a lot of cases end up having very long careers. A lot of times you'll find that graffiti artists that I fit into the techie category are often motivated to go on and pursue a legal muraling type career, whereas the moral alternates seem very focused in a lot of cases to continue their illegal work and make as big an impact as possible. Just below them are usually the controllers slash historians and the know-it-alls, and the aspiring is not on this scale just because they're completely a toss-up, and in reality, most aspiring graffiti writers and casuals end up dropping out of graffiti at some point. Ultimately, I would like to emphasize that each type of graffiti artist has probably evolved from a particular passion surrounding a few aspects of what they found good about graffiti. And I I don't want anyone to necessarily identify as a specific group, I just want these groups to help you sort of organize your thoughts and figure out what aspects of graffiti are most important to you. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, in my opinion. Although we are all inadvertently playing a part in shaping and altering graffiti culture as a whole, I believe that all graffiti writers should find their passion and use their understanding of different mentalities within graffiti to not just coexist with other types of graffiti writers and artists, but also to thrive within a sea of many personality types involved with such a worthwhile art form.